G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I wanna share with you how this really old lens, I think it's 28 years old, how this performs on the new Canon mirrorless R5. I'm gonna go out into the field, I'm gonna take lots of different photos, and I wanna answer those questions that you might have is, how's the IQ, how's the autofocus, how's the FPS? Does the IBIS of the camera you know, make up for the lack of IS on the lens? How's it work with extenders? These are all the things I'm gonna try, and these are all the things I'm gonna share with you today. All right, so some of you may have recognized the lens. It's my trusty Canon EF400 5.6, but it is starting to show its age. You know, when compared to the RF100 to 500, it lacks IS. The minimum focus distance is pretty poor. However, this is a really sharp lens. Um, it's really light, I think 1250 grams, so it's quite easy to handhold. And the thing it's got going for it is it's really affordable. I think you can pick it up for 600 US, maybe 800 Australian. So it is an affordable birding lens. If you're just getting into wildlife or birding and you want a nice sharp lens, this could be the one. Now, if you're not aware, these older lenses use what's called the EF mount and the new mirrorless bodies use the RF mount. So they are different. You can't just fit this lens to this camera. You do need an adapter and you can see here this little black EF to RF adapter which I have to mount on this to get it to work. And so according to Canon, there's no loss of IQ when you use this adapter. And I, and I can assure you that I, I couldn't see any. If we have a look at one of these photos I captured with this lens, this male superb fairy wren is breeding plumage. He's ready for spring. Um, lovely pose. And when we zoom in, the detail is just fantastic. You know, I did have a beautiful morning light to maximize that detail and I wasn't using extenders, which gives us the sharpest possible image. The first thing I want to talk about are the frames per second. You know, these latest mirrorless cameras from Canon, the R5, R6, they get 12 frames per second mechanical, 20 frames per second electronic. However, it's important to know that these older EF lenses just don't get that 12 frames per second of mechanical. This one here, I think, is valued at 6.8, and when we hit the shutter, we can hear how slow it is. It's quite slow when you compare it to the 12 frames per second of the RF 100 to 500. And it's definitely noticeable in the field after using the 12 frames per second, that's for sure. However, in saying that, we do get a full 20 frames per second in electronic mode, which is what I ended up using most of the time with this lens. Let's go out into the field and I'll show you how I use the 20 frames per second to capture some really nice images. Well, good morning. I'm going to explain exactly how I'm going to get these photos this morning. So as you can see, we've had quite a lot of rain. It's really, really green and this moss on this rock just looks absolutely amazing. So my plan is to get these birds onto this beautiful moss. Now the key is to get really low. So you can see I've positioned the camera. I've obviously got the R5, the uh, adapter. I've got a 1.4 extender and I've got the 405.6. And I've tried to get eye level with this rock here. That will enable me to get those nice smooth out of focus backgrounds. If I was too high and I was shooting down, we wouldn't get as nice backgrounds. So I've set up here and all I need to do is put some mealworms onto this rock here. I just breed these mealworms myself for my chickens. You can buy them at any um, pet store. So this high point is kind of where I want the birds to land and there's a few different rocks here. So I'm just gonna put a few of these mealworms in a couple of these little spots here and hopefully that will attract the uh, birds to land on this spot. All right, we'll get this going. Let's see how we go, all right. Okay, put the mealworms on there. These birds are pretty tame. So I'm just looking at my settings. We've kind of got um, dappled light at the moment. I'm actually at ISO 3200, which gives me 1600th of a second in F8. So my maximum aperture, or the fastest I can make this lens is F8, because we've got the 1.4 extender on. So I'm obviously on my gimbal head, which enables me to turn and move quite easily. Here it comes. The red cap, red cap robin up the back. Let's hope, fingers crossed, he comes and lands where we want him. So I'm an electronic shutter, so I should get the full 20 frames per second. <laughs> He's on my camera. Here he is. There he is. Oh, beautiful, beautiful eye contact. Looking good. That's awesome. What a beautiful little bird. Uh, the plan worked exactly as I'd hoped. You know, I've put these mealworms on this rock. He's landed on the rock. You've got a split second to get a few shots and you just hope that you get the eye contact that you're after. Um, that's the key. Okay, we've got a Jackie Winter. Here he is, here he is. There we go, over the shoulder. What a nice pose that was. Very short and sweet, that one. So the Jackie Winter definitely gave us a nice over the shoulder pose. That's where those 20 frames per second definitely help. 
you know, because as soon as you get that head angle that you like, you just hold down that shutter and it's going to take lots of photos. Hopefully one of them will be sharp. Okay, we've got a uh, woolly wagtail here. This would be a great shot if you can, if you can look at us. Well, that was a really successful session. You know, I got lots of photos that I'm very happy with. I just used some very simple techniques. If you want to know more about that, I did do a video all about how to get the best image quality. Um, check that out if you're interested. And you can see how important the 20 frames per second was when we look at these series of images of this woolly wagtail. You know, the woolly wagtail moves around a lot. It's one of those birds that just doesn't sit still. And all, I'm really wanting that eye contact. So the bird's landed where I want it. I've hit off the shutter to take a range of shots and we can see the first few, we just don't quite have the eye contact. And then the next frame, we do have the eye contact and I only got two frames with the eye contact I want before it moved off and flew off. If I'd been shooting at the 6.8 frames per second or slower, I may have missed that shot. That's why it's such an advantage to have those higher frame rate cameras. It's always a bonus when a bird you weren't expecting turns up. I was packing up and I was just about to go to the car and I saw a bird fly above and I thought, Oh, that looks like a hooded robin. I haven't seen one of those on the property for over a year. I didn't know where they've gone. I've been missing him. Um, and thankfully he came down and he got a few worms and I took some shots. It's not a very colourful robin when compared to all the other ones, but he's a real character and it's always been a favourite of mine. So I was really happy to grab this shot with a nice pose and that nice eye contact. Let's talk about the autofocus performance of this old lens on this new body. This new body is obviously packing the latest technology with bird eye AF and uh, being mirrorless, it works slightly different to DSLRs. So I was interested to see how it performs. The good news is that everything works. You know, we get pretty much 100% coverage across the AF field. Uh, the lens focuses and you can see how well the bird IF works on this camera. I'm switching between two focus points and the bird IF is able to pick up the eye fairly quickly and we can just go from one to another. And once you lock onto a subject, you can just move the camera around, which is a real advantage as to the old days we used to just move the AF point to get the composition you want. And that's a big advantage. Um, and as you can see, the shot of this red cap robin, I was able to get the eye off on the bird. The bird's nice and sharp and the background and foreground are slightly out of focus. And I quite like this shot. Usually I want to see the feet of a bird, but for some reason this image speaks to me and I quite like it. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments if this one appeals to you. So the massive advantage of these mirrorless cameras now is your ability to focus past f8. What do I mean by that? Well, when you put a two times converter on this, it becomes an 800 f11. On a DSLR, autofocus simply wouldn't work. But with the mirrorless body, the AF does work. I'll talk more about the performance of the extenders later, but here's a little preview of a shot I was able to obtain with the two times converter of a Fairy Wren, and it looks pretty good. But I want to stress something really, really important is when you put extenders on this lens, the autofocus takes a massive hit. And I mean, it's quite substantial. It's just a lot slower. And I was hand holding, trying to shoot some fairy wrens and it kind of drove me nuts, to be honest. I actually found using traditional autofocus was a lot quicker than using the bird IF. So in the end, I would just use traditional. I use dual back button focus um, on this camera. So I have one button for traditional autofocus and one button for the bird IAF. So I can simply just use traditional once I see the bird. Once the bird's in focus in the camera, I then switch to bird IAF, which then finds the bird and I take those photos. So that works a lot better than trying to find the bird with bird IAF. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, but um, it's just something to be aware of is that the bird IAF just won't work as well on these older lenses that I've found anyway. So I was even quite surprised when I was photographing these robins, I actually looked up and there were a couple of wedge-tailed eagles way off in the distance. So I thought, well, why not just try and see if the camera can pick it up? So I've picked it up and I've focused and the, I've used bird IF and the bird IF has actually picked up this eagle, which was way in the sky and it's tracked it. And I took some shots. I mean, they're terrible because the bird's so far away, but you can see that the bird IF does actually track birds in flight. It would be a bit of a challenge and I wouldn't recommend using that kit for that, but it does work. All right, so I get asked about extenders quite a bit, so I thought I'd try the 1.4 and the two times on this lens and just see what sort of photos I can get with this setup. The reason for that is 400 millimeters on a full frame camera is pretty short. And I took this shot of a fairy wren, you can see just how small the bird is at 400 millimeters. And I've got to crop in quite a lot to get the composition and the framing I want. And that can often lead to some noise issues and a lack of um, IQ. However, the R5 does overcome that a bit with the big megapixel body. All right, so when we put a 1.4 converter on this lens, it becomes a 540 F8, meaning we lose that one stop of light. 
and the max aperture we can go is f8. So we're gonna to have to use um, lower shutter speeds or higher ISO, um, and it could be an issue in low light. So the first session I had was actually with those ferrians again, and I had nice light, so I had no issue with shutter speed, and I was able to take lots of shots, and I was absolutely stoked when this male landed on a rock and it just started singing, and I've captured this shot, and you know, I really, really like how this shot's turned out. It's up on the rock, we've got a nice side, side profile, tails up, mouths open singing, and that's taken with the 1.4 and there's absolutely nothing wrong with the image quality in this shot. So in good light, the lens performed really well. You might be wondering, well, how does it perform in low light? Well, I got the opportunity to try it. It was heavily overcast. I've gone back into my front yard. I had uh, F8, so the max aperture. I think that gave me a shutter speed of 1 320th, which is really slow. And I had an ISO of 12,800, which is kind of the max um, ISO I like to use on this camera. I tried to take some shots handheld and I'll be honest, I just couldn't get sharp shots. The lack of IS, um, the high ISO, everything was working against me. I took maybe 60 shots, looked on the camera, and nearly every single one of them was out of focus or lacking detail, lacking sharpness, was basically unusable. I probably got one or two shots which were marginal. I have heavily processed one of them just to show you what you can get, and that's the fairy run you can see on the screen. It hasn't polished up too bad. However, it was an extremely difficult combo to use, probably, and that's probably the biggest drawback of these extenders on this lens is you just can't use it in low light. It's just almost impossible. You really, I think for me anyway, I've got fairly shaky hands. You have to use it on a tripod, or if you use handheld, I'd say 1 640th, 1 500th of a second would be the slowest shutter speed that you'd want to use. So it's really a good light sort of setup once you start adding extenders onto this lens. So I ended up using the 1.4 extender the majority of the time. I took maybe 4,000 photos in my testing and I got so many nice shots that, you know, it gives me um, confidence knowing that if I had to use this lens in the field, I'd have no issue putting a 1.4 on it and still getting nice shots. Yep, the AF takes a bit of a hit, but the majority of the time it worked fine. Here's a few shots I took with the 1.4 converter, which I ended up really liking. First one was this male flame robin who was posing nicely on a rock. Nice side profile, nice eye contact. Overall, a really nice image. And another image I got on the mossy grass was this um, woolly wagtail. There was just something about the pose and the setting in this which I actually really like. The bird is nice and sharp. The out of focus background I think adds to it with the warmth and the colour. Overall a really nice image. And just lastly, a uh, female fairy wren. She's not as colourful as the male, but she's still pretty in her own right. Nice perky pose on this rock. Again, taken with that 1.4 converter. Good eye contact, good pose. Another image I was happy with. All right, so I was happy with the 1.4. Let's talk about the two times converter. Obviously with the two times, we've got 800 f11. f11 being your max aperture means that you have to have adequate light or you're just gonna have fairly low um, shutter speeds or really high ISO. And I'll be, uh, I'll be upfront and honest, I found it to be pretty terrible, to be honest. The autofocus was slow, the image quality was poor. Uh, it's just not a combination that I would end up using confidently unless I had perfect light and a tripod. That's the only time that I would try this combination or use this combination. I did have a little red cap robin on a rock which was pretty close and I did get this shot which is on the screen and when we look at it, it looks pretty good to me. You know, the image quality is good but I don't want to deceive you into thinking, oh gee, I'm going to be able to get the images like this all the time. This was a bit of a rarity. This was the best I got with this setup and it was only because I was close, had great light on a tripod. When I used it every other time, as you can see in a couple of these shots, it was just slightly out of focus. Uh, the detail was lacking, it just wasn't quite right. I wouldn't feel right saying that you can use this and get nice shots because I think you'll just end up being disappointed to be honest. So from my experience, the RF 800 F11 is just far superior to the two times on this lens. The RF lens is obviously native, you get the full autofocus benefits, you get the IS, it just works better than this system does and you'll get far more consistent shots than you would trying to use this. Um, it's just food for thought. So I want to share with you an example of a situation where I used this lens and I ended up being slightly disappointed. I was in my house, I heard my chickens start going off, their alarm call was going. Uh, I've looked outside and actually saw a brown falcon flying around. I thought, oh, there might be some birds of prey around. And I happened to notice a bird sitting in a dead tree not that far from the house. So I've grabbed this camera, I've gone out, I've tracked the bird, I've gone around the bird. And then I noticed it wasn't actually a brown falcon, it was a sparrowhawk, which I have not seen on the property and I don't have many photos, so I was pretty excited. You know, I tried to get as close as I could. I was taking lots of shots as I got closer and eventually the bird flew off. And I had my fingers crossed that I was gonna get some shots because, you know, I really wanted some of this bird. And as I've gone through the photos, I started to get pretty disappointed because they were just lacking critical focus. They were lacking critical sharpness. 
and I was just going through them going, oh, that's no good, that's no good. Luckily, one of them wasn't too bad, and that's the image I'll share with you on the screen. This one is okay, and I'm definitely gonna use it. And there is a few other dead sticks around you can see here, but if you wanted to, you could clean this up and remove those other dead perches and just make the bird a little bit more isolated. And you can sort of see a process photo here, and it's come up pretty well, and I'm happy with this. However, I got pretty lucky, I think, in the end. It's, I could have gone away from that experience just with a whole lot of soft shots. So I would have been far better off just probably with the 1.4 converter. So as I mentioned, this lens does not have IS. So another question is, well, this body has IBIS. Will that counteract the IS missing from the lens? And look, it definitely helps with the viewfinder. If you can see on the screen here, one with the IBIS on and one with the IBIS off, there's a big difference in how steady the viewfinder is. It's very unpleasant to try and shoot with this lens without IBIS on. So I'm not the best person to be testing low shutter speeds because I shake for some reason. I'm not sure why. Yarn gives me a hard time over how much I shake uh, in the field. But for me, I need higher shutter speeds, to be honest. I need one five hundredth of a second or higher. doesn't matter if the lens has IS or not. Um, I need as much help as I can get. You know, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with the newer lenses, the RF 100 to 500. I'd be happy using lower shutter speeds just because that works so well, the IS of the lens and the IBIS of the body. So in conclusion, really happy with how this lens performed. Got lots of nice shots, plenty I'm going to add to my catalog. The 1.4 converter worked well. Uh, you know, the Bird IF does work, even though it's a little bit slower. Uh, using 20 frames per second electronic enables you to get lots of different shots. Uh, I just think it's good for us who have older EF lenses. You don't have to go out and buy the newest RF lenses. They're definitely better, but you can get away with using your older EF lenses for a little bit longer. Maybe invest in the R5 or the R6 and get the advantages that these bodies offer before you invest in the more, way more expensive RF glass. So I'd love to hear in the comments how your EF lenses are working on your mirrorless bodies. Are you having any issues? Are you finding it works well? It'll help others if you do that. Um, if you enjoyed this content, obviously give it that thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Thanks again to my lovely members. And until the next video, take care and see you later. Oh, it's starting to rain. Good timing. All right, see ya. So, you know, but, but in being honest, but, but interestingly, but interest, interestingly, but interestingly, but of interest, the,